Well, hello everyone. It is a Saturday morning here. We are on the 14th of September. Welcome to Elliott Wave Cafe and the weekly market review. I was uh, gone last week in a mini vacation up in Toronto, Canada, so no video last week, but um, we got lots to talk about. The markets uh, are acting pretty well again this week. Last week was pretty, pretty tough. They had a, a strong down close, uh, but we'll take a look. Uh, at the main core markets, we'll take a look at Bitcoin, uh, look a little bit at the dollar and the gold. Um, as always, just cover the core markets. Uh, a quick reminder, these videos are for educational purposes only. Uh, no buy or sell recommendation. I'm not an investment advisor. I don't uh, provide um, you know, any uh, information or any, um, you know, again, buy or sell uh, in any of the Because I'm going to show you some stocks as well and kind of what I did. Uh, and, uh, you know, you can kind of take a look at, and, and judge for yourself on that. All right. So uh, let's get going. As always, I like to start with uh, the longer term chart of the S&P 500. This is a 100 year chart uh, with a, um, you know, multi uh, decade, uh, right, a secular bull market. Uh, we continue to be in the middle of one as we're uh, continuing to rise and make uh, new all-time highs. And uh, the direction continues to be from the lower left to the upper right in here. And I think we're in this middle of this larger third wave of a three, of a three, of a three. Um, you know, and then uh, we'll, we'll dive in uh, on lower time frames and kind of see how everything looks. But what this does basically just, uh, um, it's, a, it's a reminder um, that it's much easier and, and um, in a way, I think, better uh, for the portfolios to be on the long side. Uh, and of course, you know, there are bear markets where you got to get prepared and maybe hedge a little bit or get, get to cash. But over time, um, you know, being on the long side of the market pays off. So from this uh, quarterly chart, let's take a look at our weekly count, uh, which remains... Um, as before, uh, in a series of ones and twos in here, and uh, you know, last week we had a little bit of a drop, almost a 50% retracement uh, of that wave one blue rally. Uh, you can see that the market's completely uh, reversed course of the last week, and we're back near 5651, uh, a level that if it gets taken out, I think we're going to begin that larger third wave uh, into. Um, you know, the month of November, December, January, uh, as usually those are bullish months and could uh, trigger a larger advance. We're still in September. I know seasonally this is not the greatest month uh, so far. You know, we, we, we have a little bit of a whipsaw, but uh, again, I'm not expecting this to be very easy and to just go straight up. Uh, but the direction that I see on the chart, it's that this should uh, continue to move higher. Now, uh, if I drop down on the daily time frames, you can see that uh, WXY in here, uh, followed by a nice impulse in a wave one. Uh, for a while, we were thinking, I was talking to our members, that this could have been a fourth wave, uh, or at least the drop, and then followed by a fifth. But the depth of the pullback had us change this to a wave two. And the strength of the buy uh, that was uh, several days ago, uh, that large candle right there, um, you know, I think that creates, uh, uh, you know, kind of a good ramp for the beginning of a third wave, even if, you know, there is a chance, even after you break out, that you're going to pull back a little bit or go a bit sideways, maybe, and then uh, break to the upside. So I uh, will monitor that on a, a daily basis, uh, you know, with my, my chat and my videos and all of that. So, but this is basically the, the you know, the direction that I'm looking for. Now, if you <clears throat> take a look at this page here, where I just kind of watch a simple chart with the moving averages and, and candlestick, you can see how we uh, engulfed the previous cell. Um, and if you look down here to the right, you can see how much volume came in this week. So that is uh, a pretty strong clue that uh, the bulls mean business here, and then the bears actually were... Um, did not have enough ammunition to continue to take this market down. They tried um, at some point this week, uh, towards the beginning of the week, to retest those lows uh, successfully, but without, um, 
you know having a lot of strength to continue to the downside so we're back above the 10 week moving average and uh, we found support at the 40 week i talked about this in previous videos and uh you know, I mean, obviously we have a big resistance up there, but I think that's going to get taken out and we're beginning um, to move higher. The fact that, you know, you come with such a strong volume, I think that's a pretty good clue that there is, you know, pretty strong institutional buying from, uh, you know, from the market there. Um, now, on my technical page, uh, I watched the PPO, which is, you know, a version, a percentage version of the MACD. Uh, and then I also watch the RSI because, uh, you know, in bull markets and in uptrends, we're always looking for the price and for the RSI to stay above the 50 zone. And any approaches to the 50 are usually buying opportunities. As you can see, uh, this one dipped briefly below it uh, and then it found buyers right there. So you could actually say that you've been in a, in a pretty good bull market. I mean, even if you look at the RSI, you know, without heavy dips below the 50, um ever since right october november 2023 so it's a pretty good you know indicator to keep you uh you know kind of focus on the trend and you can see that on a daily time frame as well it's a little bit more more volatile obviously but that's why i like to look at the weeklies because um you know along with the with the trends of the moving averages in here uh and with the ppo that stays above zero it tells me there is no point to um you know think bearish until uh, you know a lot of these levels get violated so you want to drop below you know that um of four, this is the uh, this is the weekly yeah, below that 30 week or even the 40 week uh you know you start to see the rsi below 50 you start to see the ppo kind of coming down and you got to be more careful but until then um it's it's uh it's good to kind of have a list of things that you want to buy and then just use opportunities to do that um you know, as the market seems to be, uh, at least for now, uh, focusing for, for upside. Um, right here, you can also see a couple of candles that basically, you know, gave pretty good clues uh, that the buyers I mean business in here. And you can see, right, several days ago, um, I mean, we had this, obviously, this massive buy. So that's when the bears tried to retest that 5,400. They failed, and then they created a super nice hammer on very very strong volume they are just above average uh and that was the clue and i made a video about it too um which we do every day but you know this was kind of what i was waiting for uh to say hey you know get long the market and and you know that's a pretty good signal uh to start initiating positions in stocks that you like uh in issues that you follow uh, for for a move to the upside now some have moved faster than others i'll show you a few at the end of the video uh, but nonetheless, uh, you know, this is the this was the clue uh, that that uh, you know the bears uh, are done, kind of done selling. So now we're back to to you know near these levels, and we'll see what happens. Maybe a bit of resistance into into next week, and then you know uh, several weeks ago we also had another candle here on high volume. Uh, I mean there were several before, but this was the one that kind of uh, um, you know told us that the downtrend could be over. Uh, and then sure enough after that you know we, we rallied up here into 5650 once again so we don't have to you know we don't have to pick the lows in the market or to try to see you know what's the um you know to pick a falling knife or or to you know uh, you got to wait a little bit until you know the market gives you more clues so obviously you know this was a scary candle but then this one here started to look pretty good uh and even that was not enough the volume was still you know somewhat low uh, so it took a while until uh, you know the bulls uh, starting to kind of put this stuff together and starting to buy more aggressively and that was through the scandal so you know that's just a simple pure read of the price action um, you know same for here right we didn't uh, rush in and buy i think i nibbled a little bit on this candle in here on that day uh, but then and then i got more aggressive as this, this day basically reversed midday and i saw the the you know the pull the strong pullback that the bulls made i was like there's no point in here you know because we've been reducing a bit of exposure due to the break of the 50 day but then it's like hey you know let's get back in it because this is uh you know this is serious so um that's where we are at the moment now let's take a look at the nasdaq which you know uh Again, look at the volume in here for the past several weeks in the NASDAQ. Uh, it found support at that 40-week moving average, created a bullish engulfing. Um, 
it could be a triangle in here still, so we could, you know, whip around a bit more. But I think the path of this resistance here, it's it's back to the upside. Uh, you know, they found again support. You know, right at those old levels. Uh, there was a quick fake breakout right here, uh, and then you know they found buyers and then once again so very very easy that this could be the path or maybe a bit more sideways in here and then go on the Nasdaq I mean I like the volume again of this past week uh, so that's that's a good indication there here is the wave count did not modify this much from last time we talked so uh, again just a one two and then we'll see if this is one two or this wave two still needs a bit more time but um, you know, I think as long as you remain uh, above these levels and you don't get be back below there, uh, the, the bull market or the, the uptrend is, is pretty much intact. So that's kind of the, the cutoff line. And, and obviously, you know, this low back here also becomes very important. We don't want to lose that uh, going into, into the next couple of weeks. Um, here is a Dow 30, which, you know, doesn't get a lot of love or a lot of coverage, but it's it's one market that has to be watched. Um, clean up trend, a little bit less volatility in here. Uh, again, with the high volume, um, just a series of ones and twos, and I think it's uh, going to continue to perform pretty well going forward. Also, on the wave count, you can see it in here. Uh, we're waiting basically to begin a larger third wave, almost like an explosion. Uh, something similar to this that can break the top of this channel and create a larger third wave. So that's on Dow Jones. Uh, now IWM, which is the small caps, uh, have been pretty weepy. I mean, they had a bunch of false stars. We've been following it since the beginning of the year, trying to get long, you know, uh, placing stops, getting stopped out, trying to get long again, stopped out again, getting long, stopped out. Just, just small positions and, you know, sometimes take profits, like, for example, on this run back here. Uh, and I and I still like it. I mean, you know, I told my members I said below 210, we got to be out of the market. Now we're back above 210, 216. I think it's another it's another reason to get long small caps. Uh, look at the volume last week, nice close. Um, will it go? We'll see. But I think it deserves another try. And if uh, you know if you catch a move here, uh, it could be something. Uh, that could look something like this, and kind of that's what I would like to to catch when this kind of gets going and give us uh, you know a move. Uh, above these highs at 235. So uh, next week I will start to, uh, you know, initiate positions and look uh, for entries in IWM. Uh, here is the, you know, the Russell count. So that's the wave three that we're uh, kind of waiting for uh, to start to develop. That's just the same count like I showed you a couple of weeks back. Uh, now let's take a quick look at Bitcoin. Bitcoin, um, you know, it really. I mean, it lost kind of its, um, what do you say, uh, connection right with the NASDAQ, that correlation uh, with, with the equities. It's been kind of on its own, a uh, little bit of weakness, a little bit of strength. It's still consolidating this huge gains that it had uh, since middle of uh, 2023. Uh, but still remains in a highly corrective pattern. Uh, it tried to break lower below that 60k. That's a big pivot uh, in the market, and um, then now it's back above it. So it's um, you know it's still kind of you know struggling for direction. Uh, I don't think it's quite ready yet. I did initiate uh, positions in IBID on Friday, just a, a starting position on that as we were moving above 60. I wanted to be long over the weekend. And uh, if the market gives more confirmation next week, I will increase those positions. If it doesn't, then uh, we'll get out of it. But, um, you know, by the way, the Nasdaq was acting with the close and the S&P, it could provide a nice tailwind for Bitcoin going into the next weeks uh, to see if it can finally break uh, this this massive um, consolidation. And here is the wave count on those weekly charts. Um, thinking again as a fourth wave, but bottom line, we got to get back above 70k. So right now we're fighting with 60. You can see it in here, right? That's the level to be watched where we were able to kind of get back above the 20, above the 50 day um, volume coming in. Um, so I want to be long above 60K, um, more long above 62.9, above 63 where the 150 day rests, and then even more long above 64K. So it's all about, you know, kind of progressive buying, um, 
you know, with more and more confirmation to see if we can actually participate in something much larger to the upside. So we start small, and then conviction we add, uh, less conviction we decrease, and uh, it's just like a, you know, like a car driving on on a highway. Sometimes you drive with 50 miles an hour. You know, there's a bit of traffic, then it's 70, then it's 80, then you can hit it up to 90 uh, or 100 miles an hour. Not that uh, I would drive that fast, but, you know, that's kind of how we're looking at the markets, too. It's it's um, pretty straightforward. Uh, you know, watch for leverage, watch for, uh, you know, all the risks, right, that, that come with that. So that's my, my view on Bitcoin and now the dollar. Uh, you know, it's been on a straight down since it broke the trend line at 104. It still looks pretty weak in here it doesn't show any signs i mean yes you do have this large horizontal support at 100 uh, level i mean it's clear clearly visible uh, in the chart right here and it's still being supported uh, i think once that level gives way uh, you can get a much larger move down in dollar you can see that gold already it's breaking higher so the dollar in here it's not uh, it tried a couple of weeks ago to hold these levels but it failed to really rally and, and hold it so uh, the pressure from the dollar is that uh, is to the downside and see if they can crack that uh, 100 uh, and then move towards 98. Uh, here is gold uh, on the weekly time frames, just on our kind of uh, clean structure here with uh, with these charts and, and you know above the 10 week, above the 40 week, uh, 10 week it's above the 40. It's in an uptrend. Um, there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, I talked about this uh, correction here when it happened and you know the chances of it breaking higher. There was a small three week correction that we broke higher on high volume. So gold continues to look good and healthy. If you if you have it, I would hold it. Um, continue to raise those stops and. Um, you know, don't forget to take profits, and then you know if you get a chance for some pullbacks reinitiate. It's just uh, you know it's just in a nice uptrend. There is really um, nothing wrong with it uh, at the moment, right? It looks it looks pretty good in here. And then here is kind of the larger wave count um, two one two one two in here. I was thinking about this wave one to be actually a bit higher, and then a wave two because uh, this does look like you have a third wave, a fourth, and maybe a fifth. Uh, but listen, uh, you know, the wave counts, uh, they're always morphing. They're always not exactly what you think they are. So, you know, you, you got a picture, you got a, you got a direction on them, um, and then, you know, you always revert back to kind of what happens on the daily basis, how it looks, uh, how it behaves price-wise. You know, this is a chart of Bitcoin, but you, you, you get the picture, right? You, you got to look at the, you know, how... Uh, gold reacts versus moving averages versus support resistance and, and you know wave counts are there for direction but you can't really be um, you know 100% only that because uh, that's when you can get hurt so uh, you know I love Elliott Wave as always and that's what I present uh, but uh, the, the, you know the technical analysis and the, and the price reading becomes uh, even more important. So that's that's our gold. Um, you know, this is Elliott Wave Cafe. I mean, I, I want to show you a few a few uh, stocks that we we've dealt with. Uh, but if you wanna, if you're interested and you like my work, you can always kind of visit it up here, uh, ElliottWaveCafe.com, and you know we do daily videos every every day about the markets and stocks. And there is a chat where I kind of talk about what I'm buying, what I'm selling, and all of that. So here is some of the stocks. Uh, they were did very very good for us uh, for the past you know several weeks if not more. Uh, GV was one that I've been talking about for weeks, and uh, it finally started to move. Um, you know, we got in and out a couple of times, and then uh, you know we bought it on the break of this high, and uh, I'm still long this one. Took a little bit of profits uh, on it, but it continues to to look pretty strong. Then Kava, it's another one that I've traded it even be below 70. And then, uh, you know, we sold out below these levels, then reinitiated back above 90 and, uh, you know, still long cover, took a bit of profits less, uh, this week, uh, you know, on the, on the test of this uh, previous top, but still looks like a fairly strong stock. Then APP was the one that I think we got long on it this Wednesday or something, and it literally like moved up 30% or 35% in, in a matter of days. Um, you know, still have, I took some profits here. I still have a pretty good position on um you know but I, I wish i would have been more long right and that's the that's the case when things work you want to be more long when things don't don't you want to be less uh but still i'm pretty happy with the trade and and it looks good and this was a clean breakout you don't want to 
you know, sometimes they don't work. Sometimes they just, you know, fake out like this guy here and then he pushes below and then you got to get out. But every once in a while they do work and you got to take advantage of that. So that's APP, Eplovin, and then TTD is another position that it initiated on Friday. I don't like how it closed. It kind of pulled back a little bit. So we'll see if we're spending too much time below this resistance. We're prob I'm probably going to get out and then, um, you know, reinitiate again if it has another attempt. But for right now, I'm going to hold it for a couple of days and see what happens. So, so just a few, just a few stocks. I mean, we're on Netflix. We, you know, we were in Apple. Uh, you know, Palantir. All, all kind, all kind of things that uh, you know we we go long and um, you know I talk about them. Uh, on my video so thanks for watching as always i appreciate you being here i will see everybody next week uh, in the meantime if you're interested in my work like i said come visit us at the Elevate cafe thanks for watching bye, -bye.